Hello folks and welcome to this week's hi fan News Etc. And for this particular video we have a trivia question that will be around in a second. Then there's some news, then we have a viewer question and then I'll give you the answer to this trivia question. And we're staying with general studies for this particular one. And the question is, one of Britain's most popular singles bands of the 70s acquired their name from their manager's secretary's habit of giving names to all her fashion accessories. What is the name of the band? One more time. One of Britain's most popular single bands of the 70s acquired their name from their manager's secretary's habit of giving names to all her fashion accessories. What was the name of the band? As per usual, please don't Google or do any of that internet research. It just spoils things. So have a little think. I will give you the answer at the end of the video. Hi fi news. First up, we have a couple of products from Orchard Audio, specifically the Pecan Pie Plus DAC and Streamer. Yeah. The Pecan Pie Plus DAC will cost you in dollar terms $399.95 and the Pecan Pie Plus Streamer that will set you back $699.95 which will include AKM's latest flagship DAC the AK4499 EXEQ which includes the latest multi-bit switched resistor DAC method employing velvet sound technology. Apparently, AKM's design separates the digital processing and the digital to analog conversion into two separate devices. The upshot is a lowering of digital noise within the analog output. For these Orchard devices, the AKM chips are coupled with low noise power supplies, an ultra low jitter clock, and op amps from Bear Brown. The Pecan Pie Plus Streamer is a plug and play high res music device. You can control music via your phone, tablet, or computer. The device can also be connected to any digital transport using SPDIF, and I will put a link below just down there if you want to know more. Next up, we have a little box from Telos. From this Taiwanese outfit we have the GNR Mini version 5.1 and it's a grounding box that's used to lower high frequency noise in and around your hi-fi. The passive models I use from the likes of CAD and Russ Andrews are very effective indeed and I wouldn't be without them. They lower the noise floor in my hi-fi. This Telos example is a bit different though because it's an active system, it's not passive. According to Telos, the issue with passive systems is, and I quote, they are not able to provide near ground reference voltage. Hence, it's not able to quickly stabilize the fluctuating potential difference between the audio equipment. The idea is that you connect your hi-fi kit to the mini version 5.1 and that corrects the ground reference point for the equipment chassis, the audio circuitry, and the ground connection. Now, do I fully understand what's going on here? Absolutely not. My technical knowledge is limited at best. As I say though, I know my passive system actually works and works well. So I'd still be interested in comparing those with this new active system. Anyway, if you're interested, I'll put a link below so you can wade through the technicalities over a coffee and a slice of chocolate cake. And once you've done that, you can explain it all to me. Telos has been selling its active system for many years, incidentally. It's a high-end system. Well, the, the main box is. This is a mini version of the main box. The main box, which is bigger, costs around £6,000. This mini version is aimed at lowering that price point and does so. Now I have a ballpark euro price of around 
1,700 euros. And if you are interested, I'll put a link to Telos and it'll show you the worldwide distributors if you want to know more about the products in your territory. Next, we have a company whose name I always seem to get wrong. I think it's Erzatich. I hope I've got that right. Tell me if it's right or wrong, please. have a pair of headphones, high-end headphones, called the Charybdis, and I think I've got that right, created using planar magnetic technology alongside thick pads crafted from velour or protein leather. These new headphones are made in the EU. The open-backed Charybdis headphones include CNC-milled aluminium cups, and I'm sure if you look at these images, well, they certainly have presence. These headphones weigh in at 740 grams. They feature a carbon fiber headband and they include detachable cables if you want single-ended or alternatively balanced terminations. The headphones themselves are also completely serviceable and come with a two-year limited warranty. The price for these headphones are 3,000 euros. Next up, we have some news from Moon. is just a quickie to tell you that Moon has launched the 250i version 2 integrated amplifier. This new version of the amplifier features an upgraded circuit design, a new shield for the power supply, and for the first time, a moving magnet phono amp. The 250i is available in either black or two-tone black silver finish, and you get six analog inputs, you also get a 6.35 millimeter headphone output on the front panel, and there's a 10 year warranty. Price for this is 2,350 pounds. That's your Hi-Fi News viewer question. question from the intriguingly named Preserved Moose. Now, Preserved Moose was watching a video review of the Townsend podiums. These are sort of sprung speaker supports. I'll put a couple of pictures on screen now so you can see what they look like. And Preserved Moose says, Paul, Preserved Moose, did you have your speakers pointing straight forward? Looks like it from the pictures. Or were they towed in? I'm just curious how that works. Normally, straight on is more open, but less defined, of course. I have mine towed in, and a pair of podiums are on the way. As my speakers are large and heavy, it would be good to know in advance if it's even worth trying them pointing straight forward, or I should just use the tow-in method that I currently have. Thank you. Well, preserved moose, I always tow in my speakers, no matter what they are. Now, I understand your comments about the open and defined positioning, and in terms of open and defined, I try to find that sweet spot. So I do experiment a bit in terms of positioning. Actually, now I'm saying this, I do recall one pair of speakers where I just had them pointing straight down the tracks. This was a pair of Hiko, I think that's how I pronounce it, Heko, he I think it's Hiko Direct speakers. And I found that if you pointed them at your head, the treble and the upper mid-range would drill a small hole in your skull because they kind of beamed at you. So yeah, for those speakers, straight down the tracks. For everything else I've ever reviewed in my life, well, yeah, I'd tow in just enough. And with your podiums, yes, I would advise towing in. 
And I use a little gizmo to help with the positioning of speakers, which is around here somewhere. Let me get it for you. It's this slab, which was produced by Kralk Audio when they were around and about. And it's one of those little laser things. Let me bring it to camera and you can have a closer look. Now, this box is designed to sit on top of your speakers and you point this hole, which the laser emanates from, and basically it shows you where the speaker sound will end up. So I tend to point it just skimming past my left and right ears, as it were. And here is a switch to turn this thing on and off. You can buy laser pointers to do the same job. This particular one has a secondary laser which points to the side so it hits the wall so you can maximize the positioning accuracy of your speakers if you wish. And that's it folks, thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. But before we go, I need to give you a trivia answer. And a quick reminder, one of Britain's most popular singles bands of the 70s acquired their name from their manager's secretary's habit of giving names to all her fashion accessories. What was the name of the band? And the answer is Slade. The group who were initially known as the Inbetweens changed their name in 1969 at the insistence of the head of their record label, who had a secretary with the strange habit of giving her accessories names. Her handbag was known as Ambrose, and her shoes were known as Slade. The band changed their name first to Ambrose Slade, and then to the more pithy Slade later on. So now you know. Anyway, that's it folks. Thanks very much for staying to the end of this video, and there are links further down for the products I've mentioned in this video. If I could ask you to check out my Patreon page too, please. Any support you can give over there would be very welcome and directly affects this channel because it helps to fund it. There's all kinds of exclusives over there too that I hope you'll like, so check it out, why don't you? Also, down in the description are links to my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join, and my website, which has all kinds of stuff over there you will not see over here. I'll be back on Friday with another video goodie, and I hope to have your company then. Until then, folks, bye-bye for now.